guys. Welcome, guys. Welcome to another time lapse. I'll be posting these every Saturday. So check them out if you like. If there is some sound out here, it's just because people are working outside my studio. I'm making noise. So yeah, thank you guys for coming back and checking out this time lapse. It will be from Call Me By Your Name, one of my favorite films now. It's about uh, two guys uh, meeting each other and it's uh, kind of hopeful and it was set in, I think it's set in the 80s. I haven't checked it out. I have to read a little bit about this for the, uh, for the voiceover. I'll do the voiceover after this intro. So um, hope you guys will uh, like it and check it out. And uh, just let's get to it. This is um, my version of Call Me By uh, Your Name, as I said. And it's truly a lovely created movie. It's about two guys and they're falling uh, for each other. And it's a very hard um, relationship in many ways, but I just really, I don't want to spoil too much about the film. Just go, just see it because if you want something with lovely picturesque pictures, feelings, uh, a rather slow movie, you can go and see that because, uh, it will make uh, your heart melt in many different ways. And it's also a bit, um, rough in some ways as well. It's very emotional. So of course so go and check that out i wanted to have like a space versus sun like a galaxy versus sun feeling here with the cold warm contrast it was it's something that i've always been drawn to and uh, i really wanted to incorporate this in a good way because it has worked on uh, quite a lot of my other pictures and it started started to be a little bit of my Thing, I think with the galaxy and stars and it fits well into my texture that I normally use so yeah I love painting like this digitally because there's so many textures that I can use and I feel very little restricted the imagery of the two guys is of the two guys in the film and um, one is rather older than the other so i wanted to have the young guy in front so the older guys a little bit more in the in the back it was quite hard to get the proportions right but i managed and especially with the lighting i have very good references it's good to have about four different references so you kind of make it your own so you don't go into the art theft area and the same with fan art as well. If you want to do fan art, you have to have a very high, high level. So there's only blood fans who probably sees it. If you're gonna do like me and sell it, because then it has to be your own creation. Uh, or else you will do something that's not very lawful. This is something that a lot of artists have done through the ages everyone is using reference is quite important to have good reference if you're wasting a lot of time if you don't have something good to look at because you will do most likely if you don't have a very large library of images in your head it will be quite hard to drag that out because you haven't learned it yet so i had good references and the idea was already set all I needed was to get the proportions right. I needed to figure out the composition as well, how it would look like. And uh, to be honest, guys, I have a rough idea of how it's going to look like, but I never plan out all my pictures. I know that you can sketch out color and composition and everything, and it might go faster that way, but I kind of like to go with the flow when you're inspired and you just go crazy with color and texture and everything so here I had to redraw the guys so many times I always use my uh, wife as like a feedback person and she's pretty honest so she can always say like no that doesn't look good there's something off here and she's not she's not an artist she has um, but she has some art background so she can say like there's something off here but I'm not sure what you have to figure it out and I go like, oh, well, okay, 
it's probably this and this. So it's nice to have someone to bounce off ideas and get feedback. Well, that was a little bit about the picture, guys. So yeah, and this is me trying to fix the lighting <laughs> for this what? video. Thank you guys for checking it out. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> hey guys, that was it. Uh, thank you for, if you are still here, thank you for checking out my rambling about this drawing and everything. <sighs> yes. And of course, I'll see you next Saturday. And I truly hope that I can do this twice a week. Um, but I co-run the shop. Uh, at the beginning a real life gallery so come by of course if you are invited again I feel like I've said this every time but it's so cozy in there and people just end up sitting there for like two hours talking to us it's really cozy and of course we draw while we're there so we have to work as well but it's a really nice place and yeah I can't recommend it more than like can't re recommend it enough and now we finally found a name for our podcast and it's called Co-Create instead of Procreate because Procreate is the drawing program that we have and I use that and since we create something together, since we co-create, we thought of having that name and uh, yeah, so that's why and we pick out a little note with a the theme every time and last time we've We've recorded three now, and last time we talked about art theft. So it's pretty juicy topics, but so yeah, I hope you like it. And if you're an artist, hopefully you will get something out of that as well. It's a very rambly podcast, but we kind of love that. It's We don't want it to be a lecture in a way. We want you guys to get to know us and so that you will feel comfortable asking us a lot of questions if you wonder about anything. So yeah, thank you for checking out my little rambly video. I will go and have a weekend now, actually. And, well, I'll draw a little bit for my exhibition, 1st of June at Blick, by the way. A lot of promotion here, but a lot of goodness for you as well. So, melty heart for you. And hope you have a lovely day, guys.